So, good afternoon, everyone, and um, thank you for attending day three of the Watershed Summit and Innovation Contest. I am Ginger Goldsbury. I'm the treasurer of the Friends of Lake Warner, and I'm thrilled to be here, and I'm thrilled to have you here. So, let's begin with Dr. Liliana Rajic. Yes. Well, good afternoon, everyone. Um, I'm very glad that you invited me to give a short presentation on Elatech and what we, we've been up to for this past uh, couple of years. Uh, my name is Lili Rajic and I'm a Chief Science Officer and the co-founder of Elatech. Uh, Elatech is a Amherst-based uh, water treatment company. We are located actually at the Institute for Applied Life Sciences at UMass. Uh, that's where we have our laboratories. Uh, prior to uh, founding Elatech, I, uh, my my entire career was in academia. I was a researcher for almost 15 years, um, doing research primarily in environmental science, environmental electrochemical treatment systems for soil and water treatment. Um, and just before I uh, established Elatech and founded Elatech with my partner, uh, I spent nearly six years at Northeastern University where I uh, led uh, uh, green remediation laboratories uh, at civil environmental engineering department uh, where we focused on uh, groundwater treatment, electrochemical uh, water treatment, uh, and that was funded by National Institute of en Environmental Health Sciences, a uh, really wonderful project uh, that looked into different impacts of contamination and uh, uh, mitigation of exposure to uh, contaminants. Talking I apologize. <laughs> Okay, we're back. <laughs> that was an that was an errant click. I didn't mean to do that. So there's going to be two <laughs> recordings. I apologize. Oh, no worries, no worries. Uh, before I dig in into uh, talking a little more about the technology itself and and uh, some of the some of the studies we did so far that are relevant for this group here, uh, I would like to introduce our team. Uh, beside myself, Rod Anderson is a co-founder and a CEO of Alatech. Uh, Linda Rauch is our interim chief technology officer and also engineering practice leader at Nextron Technology. Uh, Aidan Berry, uh, who is our chief development officer and actually a graduate out of UMass, and Nick DiCaprio, our electrical engineer. Uh, throughout the course of our product development, uh, we have an array of partners that helped us in different capacities and still helping us, uh, as you can see below. Uh, and we are always grateful for them. Uh, I'll just begin right away to the technology itself since we don't have much time. Uh, our technology is electrochemically based, meaning that we don't use any chemicals, uh, adding any chemicals into our system, either for operation or ma maintenance. Uh, it is all in one treatment, meaning that we can remove a range of contaminants at the same time uh, throughout our system. And since it's all electrochemically based, all the monitoring and control of operation maintenance is done through um, a range of different electrical devices. So we can say that it's a fairly easy, easy plug and play operation of our system. Often people think because this is electrochemical technology that it uses a lot of electricity <laughs> simply because of the name uh, and, and the concept, but it's actually low energy consumption, uh, especially comparing to some of the uh, uh, the, the, the commercially used now uh, technologies uh, with similar properties of that all-in-one uh, treatment approach. Uh, our technology so far has been focused on polishing the wastewater for industrial municipal uh, uh, wastewater treatment as well as ground uh, groundwater application. We, the core of our technology, as I mentioned, is electrochemically based and it's actually the innovation behind it um, and the uniqueness is that it merges different concepts of electrochemistry. Uh, I'll just uh, mention a few. It's uh, use of three-dimensional uh, electrodes. Uh, in our case, that's our proprietary carbon material. It uses bipolar electrochemistry, which is a concept that uh, is used in some uh, systems separately as, for example, electrocoagulation flotation systems and conventional electrochemistry. Uh, used in, in other, other applications. So this is something that we uh, managed to merge to, uh, together uh, to create this powerful technology that can remove a range of contaminants at the same time. Just an example, if we talk about organic pollutants, 
our system degrades them or transforms them to harmless byproducts. Whereas when we talk about metals, um, since we cannot de degrade <laughs> elements uh, further, uh, metals are actually securely stored within our electrodes. And upon saturation, uh, these electrodes actually become a valuable resource for one of our uh, partner companies that are extracting metals from different solid media. So this is just to give you a sense that we are really, as we are looking into, as we are looking on our technology and our applications, we are really taking this sustainable approach to close the loop when it comes to waste, when it comes to energy use, and really be on a on, on this uh, water energy nexus uh, uh, field uh, as 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 much as we as we can with the novel technologies. Uh, since Alatech was founded, uh, we actually incorporated last year in March, but uh, uh, we established Alatech in 2019. Uh, we were awardees of a couple of Massachusetts Clean Energy Center awards, uh, simply as they recognize that our technology is in this water energy nexus. Uh, and I'll talk more a little bit about this Innovate Mass uh, project, which is actually a local uh, project <laughs> to Amherst and of, uh, I think relevance for this group. Uh, as I move forward, I, I structure this as to introduce our technology uh, in terms of uh, applying it in two different configurations. Uh, one is uh, as a flow, flow reactor, flow reactor, excuse me, uh, as, as you can see here in these photos, and the other one is something called permeable reactor barrier configuration, which is more applicable for mitigating non-point pollution sources, and I think that's relevant to mention here. And I'll talk a little bit more, a uh, little bit more about that uh, as we move, move forward. So when it comes to plug flow, plug flow, plug flow uh, configuration, that means that we use pumps to pump the water through our system. Contaminants get removed, degraded, and then the clean water comes out of the reactor. And this configuration has been so far used in different piloting lab scale and demonstration uh, uh, for for range of really wide range of <laughs> wastewater. Uh, our very first pilot was at the South Hadley Wastewater Treatment Plant that was uh, funded by Massachusetts Clean Energy Center where we introduced the 3,000 gallons a day uh, capacity uh, pilot uh, system uh, with the goal to remove E. coli and lower the amount of nutrients in the secondary wastewater, uh, which we successfully achieved uh, over the course of five or uh, actually six months of, of, of the piloting uh, phase. Uh, further, what I, I also uh, thought it might be of interest here is the mm -hmm. demonstration of our unit uh, at uh, metal plating or finishing facility. So this is industrial application of our plug flow. A configuration where even though the facility had their own wastewater treatment, uh, the the majority of, of, of uh, metals, especially chromium, zinc, and nickel, uh, were in still the, uh, above the permitting levels at the facility. So our system achieved uh, these uh, these permitting levels and below that. Uh, uh, during the course of six months of, of our, of our demo demonstration at this facility, but also in addition to that, uh, we managed to lower BOD levels as well as nitrate that were of concern uh, at this facility prior to discharge in the water body. And uh, this one is actually also interesting. It's a lab scale testing that we conducted, uh, but it was done for uh, a company that uh, introduces treatment trains for uh, treatment of our agriculture wastewater. Uh, these, these results are related to dairy and chicken farm wastewater. So our system was tested as, uh, as an uh, a, a addition to their uh, current, uh, current treatment train, uh, where we managed to uh, achieve the, the desired levels of BOD, COD, and some of the nutrients that they needed to lower uh, prior to uh, uh, finalizing their treatment uh, system as well. So these are all plug flow, as I, as I mentioned, those are more applicable for, for point sources. But when we talk about non-point sources, they're a little bit more difficult to uh, address and the permeable reactive barriers are uh, often used, uh, so PRBs are often used for 
of capturing plumes in groundwater. So uh, some of these non-point sources uh, can be mitigated this way. And the principle is that the PRB is, is constructed and installed permeable to the water flow. The water flows through the whatever reactive media is depending on the contamination and then the clean water uh, is uh, uh, leaving the, the, the barrier uh, as it flows through. So in that sense, our, our current project with the town and the project that uh, is supported also by Massachusetts Green Energy Center uh, is one of the local uh, areas where the drainage from house footing drains and yard drains uh, has uh, elevated concentrations of iron. And because of that, the water cannot be released into the water body and it has to be handled by the town uh, wastewater treatment plant. Uh, some of the, the, the limitations that uh, limit, limits which technology can be used for this uh, type of, of treatment uh, are that there is no power access at the site. There is a limited footprint for solar, solar panels. So panels. So even if you were to install, for example, pump and tree system, uh, you still need a lot of solar panels to uh, provide enough power for the pumps uh, required for pump and tree. And also another challenge is that uh, it's, there's a lot of variable uh, flow, uh, water flow due to seasonal changes, right? So this 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 location uh, required a different uh, different solution than to uh, what, what uh, pump and treat systems uh, would uh, would allow. Uh, so we redesigned and refined our reactor reactor design designs uh, uh, that. Uh, can be installed in the manhole where the water, all that drainage water is uh, uh, focused to uh, in order to uh, allow as the water flow through the, uh, the, uh, uh, this uh, reactive barrier, uh, iron is removed and the water is, uh, the concentration of iron is, is less than one milligram per liter and can be then released in the, uh, into the water body. So this entire, uh, uh, system is going to be solar powered, so we are now in the midst of uh, uh, finalizing uh, the assemblies and uh, starting the installation. Uh, and this installation uh, is actually uh, because we are, uh, we are installing our, our energy low energy uh, use system, uh, comparing to pump and treat, even if it if it the pump and treat was to include the LFX platform flow configuration would be uh, significantly less uh, use of energy than uh, uh, any other alternatives. And we estimate that nearly 100 tons of carbon dioxide will be will not be <laughs> released into the environment because of wow. uh, use of our, our system. That's over a 30, uh, 30 year uh, estimation. But significant, so significant energy savings and uh, 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 the, 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 the limitations of the of this site uh, uh, are, are managed by, by our design. Uh, I just wanted to, uh, I believe this is a great, great moment to uh, just introduce quickly our next steps and invite uh, uh, anyone who sees this as an opportunity to collaborate with us on our next steps uh, as we are fine tuning our technology and system design for municipal wastewater reuse and for non-point contamination source mitigation. Uh, where we want to really dig into more uh, understanding primary mechanisms for nutrient removal and how we can enhance our systems because there is a lot of room there to, for enhancement of uh, nutrient removal uh, that now we are, uh, we are uh, uh, focused uh, to, to do so. And, and, and uh, if, if, you know, if anybody sees this as an opportunity to work together uh, for specific sites uh, as, as either piloting or research, uh, I'm open to, uh, to further discussions. And with that, uh, I want to really thank you for, for the opportunity and um, I'm open to any questions and you can either send them directly to me at this email address here or to the organizers. I'm, I'm okay with either way. <laughs> and again, thank you so much. Thank you, Liliana. Um, does anyone have any questions? Allison's got her hand up. 
Um, hello, that was a fascinating presentation yeah. uh, and very exciting. Um, so, um, as most of you know, tomorrow I'm going to be talking about cyanobacteria. Um, and the reason is because of the concern of cyanobacteria toxins, which are approximately amino acid size uh, molecules. And my understanding is that they are not currently uh, uh, treated by the routine water treatment options in our drinking water systems. Um, and I'm just wondering if your technology would be uh, uh, adaptable mm -hmm. to that type of, um, of contaminant organic pollutant removal. And my question is, does each of your plug flow reactors need to have a specific protocol addressing whatever it is that is being targeted, or is it a very general uh, uh, removal system? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Oh, thank you, Alison, for those questions. Yeah, I, we, we haven't done any testing for, for those specific toxins, uh, but that's definitely something interesting we can, we can look into. Uh, and in terms of, je of, of your second question about uh, our reactors, uh, they are not, not specific for you know, it, it, there is, it's all in one treatment. So we don't uh, target certain contaminants with, with our units. Uh, so the, the setups are, are, are general uh, for the wide range of contaminants. There are certain tweaks that if the water is primarily very uh, high organic load, where there is, we need to really induce a lot of oxidative species <laughs> in the system, we can fine tune some of those, uh, those reactions and, and rates, but it's, fairly general in terms of the structure of the units. I hope that answered your question. Thank you. Thank you, Alison. Michelle? Do you, can you remove phosphorus? Because in that list, I can see phosphorus among nutrients. You had nitrogen. Yeah, so we have data on uh, when we did the um, testing for uh, for municipal uh, wastewater, uh, as well as some of the agricultural, uh, the phosphates, we can remove phosphates, so approximately 50%, uh, and, and we didn't achieve more than that. Uh, so that's why we are now uh, looking into digging more deeply into the mechanisms that we can uh, better support uh, those specific uh, removals of, of, of phosph phosphates, as well as nitrates that uh, have been more challenging. Thank you. Thank you. And I have a question. Um, I'm at UMass and mm -hmm. we do have reclaimed water. So I saw mm -hmm. that you are using this technology for reuse. Um, I think the town of Amherst and us would be interested in talking with you and the mm -hmm. technology as well as um, when it goes through your system, how does it compare for cleanliness for going through an RO system? Because we use it for boiler water makeup as well as for cooling towers, and we're looking for to get more capacity. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yeah, that's, that, that would be great <laughs> if, we can, if we can talk more about, uh, about that. We do compare to reverse osmosis in ter terms of the uh, um, end uh, water quality. Uh, so that would be definitely something we can we can talk more in more detail uh, about. We actually did our our uh, one other pilot testing we did at Vet Center with Professor Dave Rakow at the uh, okay at yep. yeah 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 so that would be great. Um, I just put my email into the chat and we okay. can check that after the presentation. So thank you very much. Thank you. That's great. Thanks. Well, thank you for everyone for your questions. Thank you, Liliana, for your presentation. And Matt, can you send yours through chat since we need to keep moving?